Hi, welcome to Shelf Starters. I'm Rosie. I'm Kate. And today we're back for book two of The Fairy Queen. Yes, which is the one about temperance. Yes, temperance meaning like restraint. Restraint, at, well, almost like basically bordering on abstinence, pretty much. Yeah, it was that, but I think the next one is on chastity. So <laughs> we, we're getting, <laughs> it's getting, it gets more brutal all the time. There are um, more things, like I guess, because basically in the um, Norton, you only have Canto 12. So you're coming yes. from what he's holding himself back in in Canto 12, but there are yeah. other challenges along the way that are like holding himself back from like wealth or you know, other things like that. Other well, it's basically like, any form of indulgence. Yeah, indulgence in general. But That's the clever word. thing about it, Rosie, I think, is that by saying mm-hmm. that you have to, like here's a story that's going to show you how indulgence is terrible, the description of all the indulgences is allowed and, and it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's so rich. Yeah, I mean, that's the best bit, yeah. I think I preferred book two to book one. Oh, I did hands down, hands down. Much preferred But isn't that weird? I think everyone just, like, most people read book one and then that's it because it's just so massive, you know, like in school. Yeah. I think they just book one quite a lot. Well, I think you can be forgiven for that because book one is, in fact, a a pretty big slog. It's a a self-contained story, really, and it's a slog to get through it. And so I can see that you'd go, yes, I've done that now. I've done Spencer. But when you get to this one, book two, it's a quite different feel, I think. So we know from book one that the structure, when we talked about um, Spencer and his purpose with the fairy queen, we know that it's episodic structure. So we've got, um, he had actually planned to write 12 books, but we've only got six plus some extra cantos. And the poor man. I mean, it was a very ambitious undertaking. from six books yeah so he only got to, to six but um each one was supposed to be a different uh virtue so following yes. a different knight who represents a different virtue, a different virtue um, yeah. from, and then their own little special challenges so they are quite episodic in yes. nature so yes. um in a way it's kind of sad because you do get to like you get to know it one night and then you get and to then the they go the yeah next, and you're like, oh we've sort of forgotten about the previous one a little bit but um red cross did come into this one at the beginning Yes. So he was there for a short period of time. So this follows Sir Guyon, who is, yep. yeah, like you said, the um, guy who represents temperance. And at the beginning, he actually does run into the Red Cross Knight. Um, yes. And the old, remember the old magician from um, yeah. last time? Yeah. <laughs> so he tries to convince Sir Guyon that this knight whose description matches the Red Cross Knight um, raped a woman. Yeah, um, but it turns out that that woman is Duessa, that witchy person from the last one, who was like really deceitful. And yeah, he obviously didn't do it. Red Cross Knight would never do that. Um, <laughs> but that's how they um, they meet each other. And he's like, "How dare you?" And then they kind of work it all out. I think he honestly just believes him because he had some like Christian symbol on him, and he's like, "Oh, he could not possibly have done that." <laughs> but anyway, we do briefly meet him. Um, but then it just follows the guy and the main quest for this one is he has to go and destroy the bower of bliss because there is a evil woman there called acracia yes who has been luring men to her bower her like her lair thing um and seducing them and then she turns them into beasts and yes. the, so guy discovers this because he comes across another really sad woman called amavia which means sorrow I think yes yeah everyone's it's super symbolic everyone's names mean something everything's symbolic um, the whole every, all the time isn't it every single thing it's all yeah. symbols everywhere and so yeah he rides up to see her and on scene so he, he's accompanied by a palmer as well that's another important thing this palmer guy who's a um like a priest kind of figure representing christianity obviously so they're with riding his special along staff like, rosie his magic with the magic staff, staff yeah, yeah which is very yeah. cool and they're riding along and they, they come across this woman and as she sees them she stabs herself in the chest she's next <laughs> to her um she's got a newborn baby and her husband's dead body is next to her as well so it's this really dramatic scene they're coming across this sad family where this baby is covered in blood still alive um oh. and she has stabbed herself in the chest and her husband's dead next to her and as she's dying, she tells them this story that her husband was lured into the power of bliss and he managed to escape. But as revenge, Acracia had poisoned him. So he still died. So then she's so devastated, she kills herself. And then there's this whole awful scene where they try to um, clean the blood off the baby, 
Ugh. and it won't come off and it's very like lady Macbeth kind of situation except yeah. here i think it's symbolized like either the sins of the parents kind of coming down yes. on the child yeah 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 something like that or original sin or both i don't know but the poor baby is just covered in blood and basically left that way um they eventually drop it off somewhere else but basically that's what starts this whole quest that he has to then go um avenge these deaths um, yes. and destroy our bliss and meet a creature and um, a quest and a real quest it is. I mean, the things he has to go through and the series of temptations along the way. The classic mermaid singing, luring people in. And yeah, it, it's lots and lots that. of things that, that we now are really familiar with as in part of mythology and storytelling and legends all together in the one canto, <laughs> which is Including one book. King Arthur. Yeah, everybody's in here. Well, the description... Some of the settings, you know, the, the description of the setting absolutely reminds me, or obviously Coleridge drew from this, from I think. Yeah. yeah, like, I mean, obviously, if you think this is I'm Tree My Bower and um, Kubla Khan and even the, the sea one, you know, the water, water Mariner. all around. Yeah, yeah. It mm. all elements you can... When you read, I thought, that's what I immediately thought about when I was reading this. I yeah. could feel that imagery really resonated for me with that whole Coleridge. I think that's Coleridge in there. I, I was thinking um, the thing that stood out to me the most at the time of reading it was um, the Odyssey because there's also a lot yes, of Yes, but uh, you're much more familiar Alpha. with that myth, with uh, Greek mythology and all, all yeah, of Yeah, it that. wasn't too long that I read, I read the Odyssey, but they actually, like, some of the monsters are, like, the same ones that he's taken. Yeah. The yeah, monster, and you don't have the monsters stuff. in in Coleridge, obviously. No, but, no, the, but, I think but the rich the story, description, when we're talking that lavish, you know, beautiful, rich description and nature versus art, all of that is very, very, very Coleridge-y to me. So he must have drawn from this. He must have. I oh, mean, that's exactly. what romantics were all about, weren't they? So drawing from oh, the classics. Yeah. So you, you'd think that he actually would have read Spencer obviously but yeah, I, I love that part I loved all that the the settings I just love that description of the setting and I love the way I thought it's just so clever that you develop this idea of you know you don't want to have any of these temptations this is all indulgence it's really terrible and then but let me go into <laughs> detail Describe about it. that I guess in the reader as well right like yeah um, totally it's showing why the temptation is so strong because the yeah you can feel it very beautiful that's yeah and what did you feel about the character of Guyon <laughs> He was all right. I, I don't kind feel of like you like, reminded me of a like a you know affable, naive kind of like a you know young student. You know he had that kind of aspect oh, about definitely him. Oh, yeah, and he needs the Palmer desperately. So the Palmer, unlike, got, yeah, the Palmer is in control. There are many points along the way where um, Sagayan almost goes off track, like so he close. almost gets thing, and then either King Arthur comes along or this Palmer, or the Palmer like, wards off, I like the nudges him back right yeah. path and that was very big at the end there but yes. I want to um quickly mention uh King Arthur's bits yes because there was quite a lot going on when they go to the house of armor armor means soul in yeah. Italian or Latin or both and each part of the house represents a human body okay so it's like the door is the mouth you mean a body the, part the, or the... Yeah, yeah yeah the body part like a part of the body so the whole house is like a body, I suppose. Yeah. So the door is a mouth, the kitchen is the stomach, and then they go up to the tower, which is the mind, and in the tower oh. they have this library. And then there's a whole canto in the library where they're just reading. <laughs> like, and King Arthur is reading um, the history of England, and he basically is linking the history of England to Elizabeth, like Spencer, I mean, Becky. So um, yes. it's the whole history of kings of England that we read with um, Geoffrey of Monmouth back in the medieval period but yeah. it's kind of twisted so that it's clear that Arthur's in there and also that Elizabeth is then directly related to Arthur is what yes yeah. is trying to say yeah and he's he wants like, us to all understand the right yeah yeah um so he's reading the king the history of England um on the one hand and so Guyon is reading the history of fairyland mm. and like learning about his people because he's from fairyland and it's just yeah it was quite nice but then they um get called away to supper and um and then so Guyon goes off continues on in his quest and as soon as he leaves poor Sir Arthur gets attacked by um 12 like bands of evil men like they like storm the castle he gets has a full-on siege of the castle um and there's a big battle there but 
uh, the main thing I think was the like the knowledge part that was really interesting to see how he's like he's trying to bring in Elizabeth again yeah in some way you know most of this hasn't really had much to do with Elizabeth Canto too no I mean, no you all can yeah. almost forget about her in fact it yeah. there's not much room for it no yeah so then they go on um so Guyon leaves King Arthur to deal with his battle and he goes on on this sea quest which is where we pick up in Canto yeah 11 and 12 well I think he's 11 is is the beginning of the journey isn't it or is it no because and the journey is three days I, and I read somewhere that that so the, like crucifixion crucifixion thing, so the, the time yeah. between crucifixion and resurrection yeah yeah no 11 is the attack on the castle so okay. it, it's Canto beginning of Canto 12 that we see the, that we um, start setting sail yeah and it's just the sea journey itself I've got some quotes it's great here. and this is the ancient mariner stuff yes so the mm. um the boatman uh they've got a boatman there and there's a guy steering do, doing the mm. boating somehow yep. but it's the palmer who's steering it yes. <laughs> because he says palmer steer right and keep an even course so it's just like the whole symbolism of what and that's what he does he keeps everything even yep on all the, the time yeah yep. but then it seems like um they passing by that grizzly mouth did see sucking the seas into his entrails deep that seem more horrible than hell to be. So is it's that in like, it? So there are like two sides, aren't there? There's like the gulf and then the rocks. Yeah, that's a whirlpool. Yeah, and does that suck the ships down into the whirlpool yeah. is the idea. And then the rocks, I guess you just get smacked up against them. Yeah, it says the ribs of vessels broke. Yeah, so um, they squeeze them, squeeze them and bash them. Yeah, smash them against yeah. the cliff. Yeah, yeah. And um, the armor does this whole like... Uh, <laughs> He does a whole um, spiel about people on this island, I think. They're on the rock of vile reproach. Um, yes. And turns into a moral thing. But then we get to, um, oh, yeah, we see some quicksand. We, we see, do. Yeah. We've got, and the mermaids. Oh, yeah, the mermaids. Yeah, whirlpool of declare. Uh, the violent birds, Rosie, my favourite knot. Oh, yeah. Then it was like actually like a, a Hitchcock movie. The birds, like birds of all kinds coming and attacking. And it's really hard for me to read that right now, Rosie, because, of course, in Australia, in Sydney, this is magpie swooping season oh, where they've yeah. laid their yeah. eggs and they're now very territorial and they literally are swooping out of the skies and attacking people that they think are going to hurt their eggs, their nests. So when I read anything about birds, I get more paranoid than normal. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't. I don't love the birds. That's my most hated part. I like the reference. All... I love the little story on the cave, you know, about Jason and um, oh, Medea. Medea. I, you would love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and the yeah. bursting and the dress bursting into flat. You know, the reference to the dress she gave Medea gave to Jason's paramour um, yeah. that burst into flames when she put it on. That was that description was amazing. The vermilion and gold yeah. was sprinkled and oh wow. That was beautiful. I love that, didn't you? The ivory waves yeah, and, yeah. and and then, but the snowy substance spread with vermilion and then a yeah. piteous spectacle, spectacle, gold besprinkled yet seemed in the enchanted flame. Yeah, that's beautiful. And then, uh, and then. Yeah, then we get to the battle eventually. And the gate, we so we've got a gate, battle. haven't we, made of grapes that we've got to get through the gate and not, and not eat the grapes. <laughs> not, not, not sit there and eat the grapes because that's what normal people yeah. do. But no, resist that. Don't stop and eat the fruit. Carry on. Yeah, so many but, like bowls of wine. And then we get the woman who's on the porch with the garments loose. Except her first and then give her a name. So yeah, she, the comely yeah, dame. The comely dame. Foul, disordered, and garments loose that seem unmeet for womanhood. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And she holds um, a cup of gold. Yes, and he smacks it out of a hand, doesn't he? And fruit in the other. And he, yeah, he smacks it out of a hand, like, don't tempt me, I'm not interested. Yeah. Um, but quite violently not interested. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just not, it's not like, oh, thanks, but no. It's like a full no, smack. Like, but then, really. and then uh, once he's done that, then he's in paradise, right? That paradise land. Yeah. Which is beautiful. And this is where he gets actually tempted. Yeah. Well, it's got painted flowers and um, brightly coloured trees and Dales, this is a bit that sounded like Coleridge and Kubla Khan. Yeah. Painted flowers, trees up shooting high, dales for shade, the hills for breathing space, the trembling groves, the crystal running by. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then we talk and about art like and nature. We have gold, gold yeah. and ivy. Yeah. It's really, really lots and lots of colour imagery that Coleridge used as well. And then we get to the yeah. fountain, which of course was also in Kubla Khan. Pure, shiny, silver flood. And Love in the it. fountain. Two naked damsels. Yes. Bathing in the fountain. And like wrestling. <laughs> and wrestling is a little bit strange. 
it's a little bit yeah. like it's a bit like a contemporary scene. It's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And they're like going in and out of the water and like exposing themselves in various like, but exposing themselves and then hiding themselves again, like kind of just. How about the description in. of do you, uh, the description of breasts made me fall on the floor laughing? Oh yeah. Two lily pads. <laughs> I just fell on the ground. That was hilarious. And then the, the <laughs> fact that the rest of her didn't makes him even more aroused. Yeah, he, he's thinking about what can't he see? What? Yeah. yeah, what he can't see. Yeah, what he's lies just, beneath? I'm very <laughs> taken by these two women, and <laughs> the palm was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> get over this not- Move on, move on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He says we're at the end of our journey. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Um, he says, You're nearly there. Near the end of our travel is. <laughs> yeah. I know it's pretty funny. We have, like hurry up, basically, we must um, hear one's Acacia, whom we must must surprise. Else she will slip away, and all our drift aspires. Yeah, so it will all be for nothing if you don't get it together and <laughs> get to the end of this journey. And then we um, move from the visual imagery to the oral, like the sound of the music sound and the waterfall sound and the wind yeah. sound. It's all like hitting you in the ears. That's right. Yeah. And then okay, so lots of chanting, blah blah blah. Then we get to actual Arcasia, like after the music, after hearing about her, we get to her, right? And yeah. I love the the imagery of the veil and the silk. Yes. It's beautiful and her alabaster skin. Yeah. But it's like a subtle web, like a spider. Which is interesting. Yes, they and they mentioned this. Um, they mentioned what's the name? The god, the spider god. Yep. What's that one? Ah, uh, Arachne. Arachne. They mentioned like Arachnid, yeah. like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Arachne is from Greek, Greek mythology. I think she's the one that was actually turned into a spider by Zeus. But so she's basically they're saying so she's arrayed or rather disarrayed, all in a veil of silk and silver thin. So yeah. she's got like this veil around her, which yeah. looks like a spider's web because it's so fine. And she's got a new lover. And the interesting and thing about these lovers is they're not they are there by their choice that they want to be there. It's yeah. just that they kind of get like fully sucked in once they're there. Well, I guess um, the fine line between control and complete lack thereof. Yes. Yeah. And so, and he's, okay, he's, he's there, shield, all his armor is hanging on the tree, isn't it? So he's separated from his yeah, military he's completely arm vulnerable. and he's very vulnerable. That's right. And they're both vulnerable, really. I mean, they're lying there. And yes. then a good old palm yeah. just happened to have made in advance, he's something he prepared earlier, the, the net <laughs> that they're going to actually trap yeah. them in. And he's hilarious, yeah. this palmer dude. So he's made a special net and it's like, mm-hmm. quick, we've got to chuck it on them right now before they wake up. And then he, <laughs> they tie up... Um, the magic witch it's quite surprising to me that this woman who's so powerful and can yeah it could just be caught in a net and that's that. it. yeah it can be caught in a net and then that's I yeah she's completely powerless at that yeah point. well you've got to suspend your disbelief a lot of the time obviously maybe the palmer's <laughs> net is also kind of magic well his staff is magic so yeah maybe everything maybe everything like, he's fashioned is also yeah neutralizes her magic somehow <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, we, we just we just work with that. We go with that. And then and they okay. don't like, hurt her or anything. They just capture her and they, just they capture destroy her. the bower. And then eventually, yeah, they destroy the bower. And this is my one complaint from the whole of book two is we're leading up to this big moment where he has to destroy the bower of bliss. And the whole journey has been to get to this About moment. It. And then the, the destruction of the actual bower is like one Takes two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yes. how did you? Sorry, they're like, show me. I want to see the destruction. <laughs> like, no, I want to see that, you down all of the like. But that's like everything, Rosie. It's all really heavily weighted towards the beauty. Getting there and then not there. Uh, the anticipation and the beauty. And, you know, that's a bit Keats in the urn as well. Yeah. In fact, there's a lot of Keats yeah. urn stuff here with the freeze and the, well, the romantic mythology. Really stuff, the romantics yeah. have just borrowed from this big time. And good yeah, on this Yeah, they destroy everything in one stanza. Yep. They take her away, and then yep. Knight is pissed off with them, the um, the lover, because he was actually quite happy. <laughs> he was having a quite a nice time. Yep, and they've yeah. ruined it. They've ruined yep. it, and then um, then on their journey back, they realize. I think they knew this before, but it's, it's a guy on maybe is a little bit dense. Um, <laughs> I swear, we all knew. I, this. Well, he is. Um, he's like a naive puppy. Like he is. A bit yeah, dense. he's like, oh, these beasts are actually men that they've you know the sea monsters and stuff that they've seen on the way and they're like oh yeah the penny has fallen the penny has yeah he's finally he's finally got it um yeah that these are the people that acrocia's turned into monsters so all the month then now they're not scared of the monsters anymore because they know that they're just men and the palmer just comes along and converts them back with his magic stuff that's it and then it ends really abruptly with that (laughs) and it has this message at the end see the mind of beastly man that has so soon forgot the once of his creation when he life began 
but now he chooses this with vile difference to be a beast and lack intelligence. Very much end of Ancient Mariner. The little lesson, it seems almost a tad trite at the end there. No, I was kind of expecting more to happen. Yep. (laughs) Because I think also in book one, more did happen. They got to the end of the um, request and then they had the big party and the wedding um, and all that sort of stuff. And then it was like, oh, and he's got to go on and do more quests. And it was a bit more like, I guess, how modern fantasy, like I'm sort of actually thinking of like Lord of the Rings and stuff where it ends, we have a beautiful like party scene and then we're like, Mm. and there's going to be more adventures to come. Mm. And that's kind of a good ending for us, I think. But just ending at, it's done. And no Quest idea done. To go. Tick. We've learned a lesson, hopefully, and then we yeah. get ready for book three. Maybe we'll see Sagayon in book three. I think maybe at the beginning, at least, we might have to like sort of go into the next night. We might see Sagayon a little bit. I hope so, because I do like him. He just reminds <laughs> yeah. me. He just it really reminds me of. Actually, he reminds me of a particular person I know, who you know, a young person. The <laughs> innocence. It's the innocence and the purity of him. And naivety. And naivety yeah. of him, yeah. Yes, I really I liked, liked this one. But, um, I loved it. I thought that it was a really good read. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, like, actually enjoyable to just sit and read. And I'm sure, you know, I, I think with all of Spencer, if you were actually studying it, it would be even better because I'm sure there's so many. Because the like, references, the layered references, referencing and the symbolism yeah. and all like, of that. Whereas I would able feel to like, it all, I, great. yeah. You don't want to, you, you sort of feel like you're bound to look things up, but you don't want to stop, you don't want to interrupt the actual reading in the language. So no. it'd be lovely to have been taught first yeah. and, and then go back and read, or read, to read, to then, read, then be taught, then go back and reread, which is what we should yeah, do. It might, it's is, definitely a reread kind of book, I think is the yeah. thing, and the problem is it's very big. But, um, but yeah, because I think there is a lot to be said for the way that we're doing it as well, where you are just appreciating the story and yeah. the lyrics. Yeah. And we're still getting a lot of the references just from like yeah you, you like just absorb other yeah. parts of literature and just like some of them also are really like whacking you over the head with them so, yeah. <laughs> so you can definitely like get enough I think to get by with the story but yeah you definitely would get a whole extra level of understanding if you did this as a school text even just like some of the books um in more detail would be great yeah anyway so next next time we'll be on to the third book we will theme. which is chastity i'm actually yes. kind of excited i think I actually might start because i'm really in the mood now um, yeah, that's the thing it the- does actually put you in the mood doesn't it we've had such a long break and i think when i put it down i forget how good it is i know but once you get yes. swing of it you're really enjoying it but yeah you sort of forget in between reading sessions <laughs> how much you like it i think i've only got three of the cantos from book three yeah. so i will read will i read all three yes so we do them as a book yes yeah oh yeah one book each a week yeah yeah and then that'll be it. We, um we have so we do book three next next time and then we have one more on the uh, the final cantos that don't fit into any books the mutability cantos yeah. so somehow in between there i have to read three books yes yeah. <laughs> so read, read, read a, a lot, lot. <laughs> it's a little while it's an awful yeah. lot but of course you'll be fine fine with it but i am and I think as long as I just like keep it going and don't put it down again for a long chunk of time, I think I'll be good to get yep. through it. And also, I think now that you've started the swing of it, it does become yeah, I easier and easier. The, like, yeah. the structure yeah. and what we're trying to achieve in each one. Mm. Yeah, I think I'm actually really going to enjoy it. And I really like you on audio. We haven't mentioned again, like a lot, we talked last time a lot about how we're actually approaching this, but um, I'm really finding audio combined with the text is helping so much and i'm putting See, the now audio that's on interesting. i think it, the definitely you said combined with the text so my yeah. problem is i can't this text is too big to place on my treadmill which is where i am when i do audio <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so i cannot have the visual while i'm listening and i am actually finding that it does not work for me as just audio i need the visual no, of the words a lot of detail. i need text because there's too much yeah. and i'm just going to la la land and miss half of it so yeah that is not not working for me i have to read it as a text yeah but i'm but enjoying I think definitely, it but you could when you're reading the text like when you're sitting down and reading the text you could bring out your audio i know but i sort of now don't i don't want to because i'm kind of in the mind of my own Doing voice it. in my mind yeah. but i put mm. it on at like two times speed so that i am like still reading at my like normal pace but it just yeah. helps me to like I think especially it just helps me with some spelling and things that you yes know, are yes unfamiliar old-fashioned. words yeah unfamiliar words yeah helps yeah. me like not have to have that pause like it's not like it's hard to understand what the what the words are but they kind of take me out of the story a little bit trying to like yeah it yeah. I don't know it just slows me down <laughs> but um, when I have the audio there as well it makes it so much easier to follow along 
So yes. yeah, I think I will try to do some more of that today. So um, that was book two of The Fairy Queen. Um, I think you can tell we both really enjoyed it. Recommended read. Both. Definitely a recommended yeah. read. Really fun. Is this now, I want to know from anyone oh, watching. Yeah. Um, do you think now from like hearing us talk about book two compared to book one, yeah, what did they think? Picking up the Fairy Queen. Yeah. Um, do you could ever read just like because you know I think you could also just read just book two. Like you don't have I to do read. Too. I don't think you need book one at all to read book two. Yeah. And what I mean, there'll be people who've. I'd be interesting to hear people who've read all of them. Yeah. If there is anyone watching who has read all of it, I would love. I would yeah. love to know. That. <laughs> like, yeah. If there's more like um, detail that we've missed that is interesting for us to know about, it would be great. Um, yeah, be, yeah. Yeah. Let us know, people. <laughs> Good to see you and thanks for watching. Yes. And we'll yes, see thanks. you next time with book three. Chastity. <laughs> <laughs> <On> chastity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.